Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and I'm the Education Officer at Carboo. I deliver talks in schools up and down the UK all about the Arab world and about Arab communities too. In this session, I'm going to briefly introduce you to the Arab world, where we'll be talking about the different landscapes, the different dialects and people of the Arab world. So to start with, intro to the Arab world. The Arab world has an immensely rich history and culture. During the Middle Ages, the Arab world was going through a golden age of inventions and discoveries that shaped the way that we live our lives today. Great empires have risen and fallen. It hosts some of the most notable historic sites in the world and is world famous for its food and art. The Arab world continues to contribute to our global community today in science, arts, culture, academia, music, film, and so on. But so many people don't know this about the Arab world. In fact, in a poll that was done by Carbu and YouGov, 81% of Britons interviewed admitted to knowing little or nothing about the Arab world. So today I'm going to briefly introduce you to it. The Arab world covers land double the size of Europe and it's spread right the way across North Africa, which we can see here, Western Asia, which is just here, and the Horn of Africa, which is here. There are 22 countries in the Arab world, over 30 different dialects of Arabic spoken, and what this means is that there are 30 different types of Arabic spoken, and approximately 422 million people living there. Now, when people think of the Arab world, a lot of people think it looks something like this. And they're not entirely wrong. In fact, a staggering 80% of the Arab world is desert. There are famous historic sites in the Arab world which are situated in the desert, and some are even wonders of the world, one of the most famous being the Pyramids of Egypt. Now, a lot of people know about the pyramids, but not many people know why they were built. So the Pyramids of Egypt were built over 4,000 years ago, and they were built to guard the remains of the pharaohs who ruled over ancient Egypt. Archaeologists believe that, once upon a time, the pyramids were smooth and polished, so that they would reflect the sunlight and dazzle anyone that looked directly at it. So you can imagine how impressive this must have looked in the middle of the desert. But Egypt is not the only country with pyramids. There are also the Nubian pyramids of Sudan. Now, interestingly, Sudan actually has more pyramids than Egypt does. It has 250, and like Egypt, they were built to guard the remains of the pharaohs. And last but not least, we have Petra in Jordan, and Petra was a major centre for the trading of incense from Arabia, silks from China and spices from India. But the Arab world isn't just desert land. The Nile is the longest river in the world and runs through two Arab countries, Sudan and Egypt. Land along the Nile is very fertile and there are bushes, trees, vast grasslands and fields that run alongside it which we can see in the image just here. So as so much of the Arab world is desert, much of its population have migrated to live closer to the water sources, such as the Nile. In fact, around 90% of Egypt's population live on the Nile, which is about 5.5% of the land. This means that approximately 88 million people live on the Nile. And this just shows how important the Nile is to life in Egypt. Aside from the Nile, the Arab world also has the Socotra Islands of Yemen. And the Socotra Islands are one of the most isolated landforms on Earth. There are nearly 700 species in Socotra that are not found anywhere else in the world. One of the most astonishing of Socotra species has to be the dragon's blood tree. And that's the tree that you can see in the image. This tree has adapted to the dry environment of Socotra and the green leaves, they shade the tree from the sun, allowing the tree to retain water from the infrequent rainfall. The whole island is considered a UNESCO heritage site. Then there's also Constantine in eastern Algeria 
and this is known as the City of Bridges. Its landscapes are carved out of the rocky and mountainous terrain, and its slopes are connected together by six bridges, which you can hopefully see just in the distance there. Then there is the waterfalls of Morocco, the countrysides, the snowy countrysides of Syria, and then we have Dubai. Dubai is one of a few very modern, very wealthy Arab cities. In this picture, you can see two famous landmarks, and that is the Burj Al Arab and the Burj Khalifa. And Dubai, along with other countries in the Gulf, are among some of the richest countries, not just in the Arab world, but across the entire world. Now, their wealth does not represent the wealth of the Arab world. The Arab world also has very high levels of poverty, where in some countries, vast numbers of the population are living below the poverty line. So, for example, in Syria, 83% of the population are living below the poverty line. In Iraq, it's 25%. In Yemen, it's now 75%. And in Egypt, 33% of the population are living below the poverty line. According to the poll done by Kabu and YouGov, which I told you about earlier, a third of Britons who were interviewed associate the Arab world with wealth, even though the Arab world is home to some of the poorest countries in the world. Now, just for context, as many of you guys will know, Syria and Yemen are currently in conflict and there are many displaced people and this has exacerbated the current economic situation there. We've briefly looked at the diversity of landscapes in the Arab world and touched on the differences in wealth that exist there. Now let's talk about language. So as I said earlier, there are 30 different dialects of Arabic spoken across the Arab world. This means that there are 30 different types of Arabic spoken. So for example, in Egypt, they speak a slightly different Arabic to Sudan. And in Morocco, they speak a slightly different Arabic to Algeria, and so on and so on. Now here is a really good infographic which shows the different ways that you can say what are you doing across the Arab world. So let's go to Egypt. In Egypt, to say what are you doing, you would say bit'amil e, bit'amil e. But if we just go over to Palestine, to say what are you doing, you would say shu bit'sawi, shu bit'sawi. So you can really hear the difference there. In Egypt, once again, it's bit'amil e, and in Palestine, it's shu bit'sawi. So you can hear that it sounds completely different. Now, what's interesting is that in regions which are close by to each other, the dialects are quite similar. So just on top of Palestine, we have Lebanon. So in Lebanon, to say, what are you doing? You would say, shu am tamil, shu am tamil. So it's not exactly the same as in Palestine. So once again, in Palestine, we'll say, shu bit sewi. But you can hear the similarities, especially with the initial shu sound. This is something that is quite helpful to be aware of because once you know this, you can kind of start to figure out the geography of the Arab world. If two countries sound like their dialects are quite similar, it's likely that the countries are close by to each other. Now, if you want to see other really cool infographics like this, then you can go onto the QFI website and click on student resources and you'll find loads of really, really cool ones there. Now, speaking of language, there are many English words that we use today that originally come from Arabic. Many of these words came over during the Golden Ages, and this is a time when Arab scholars were world leaders in science and technology, and when trading flourished. And here are some examples of English words with Arabic roots. So we have gazelle, cotton, chemistry, giraffe, coffee, algebra. Now let's look at the word albatross. So we know that albatross is a type of bird. Now in Arabic, the word albatross means the diver, and it refers to a type of bird that dives into the water to catch fish. So knowing the Arabic root teaches us something about the nature and characteristic of this bird. And the word arsenal. We know that arsenal is a collection of weapons and military equipment. 
and it actually comes from the Arabic dar sana dar sana and this means house of industry and it was usually used by the military or the navy to build up and store weapons so you can find out so much more about words and about names when you look at the root meanings and it will help you to gain a deeper understanding for them too so i'd recommend researching english words with arabic roots to really discover the true and deeper meanings arabic is used across the world especially amongst muslims and this is because arabic is the language of the quran the muslim holy book so muslims from around the world whether they're in england pakistan the us use arabic to read the quran but also for greeting one another and an interesting fact is that most muslims actually live outside of the arab world and this is despite a lot of people thinking that most muslims are actually from the arab world now going back to the 30 different dialects that we were speaking about before those 30 different dialects of arabic are spoken by 422 million people now a common misconception about the arab world is that everyone is muslim In reality, the Arab world is made up of people of different faiths and people of no faith too. The majority of the Arab world is indeed Muslim. However, throughout history, there has always been a very significant Christian population and a smaller but still significant Jewish population too. Lebanon is one of the most religiously diverse nations in the Arab world with roughly 18 recognized religious communities. The Arab world hosts sacred spaces for all three major world religions. One of the most sacred spaces in the Arab world for all three major world religions is the city of Jerusalem. So in the city of Jerusalem you will find the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and this is the site where Christians believe Jesus was crucified and many Christians make pilgrimages there every year to visit the site. You will also find Masjid Al-Aqsa, also known as Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam, and it is where Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavens. And then finally, we have the Wailing Wall, and this is believed to be the last remaining wall of Herod's Temple, and it's a place of prayer and pilgrimage for Jewish people. So in this video I have briefly introduced you to the Arab world but there is still so much more to learn for example the art and the culture of the Arab world and maybe we'll do that in a part 2 but for now I want you to head over to our kahoot and search for our quizzes on the Arab world so there is an intro to the Arab world beginners and an intro to the Arab world intermediate for those who want a bit of a challenge And this is to continue learning about the Arab world but also to consolidate that knowledge too. Now I'm sure you guys will have no problems at all acing those quizzes. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a bit more about the Arab world. And I hope you'll join us for our next two videos which will be on Islamophobia or anti-Muslim attitudes and also Arab stereotyping.